good morning everyone welcome to my youtube channel yesterday we discussed about carbohydrates and their introduction the definition of carbohydrates and the classification monosaccharides disaccharides and polysaccharides we also discussed about the application and their importance so today we will start a fresh topic under carbohydrates only that is cellulose based water filter so what was cellulose cellulose was an example of polysaccharides which is found in plants that's what we discussed yesterday's class right so cellulose based water filters are filters made up uh, made from the cellulose a carbohydrate polymer found in the plant cell wall so yesterday when i was explaining about the carbohydrates i had mentioned about the cellulose being present in plants which will uh, which will give the high mechanical strength and support to the plants so they are used to remove the impurities and contaminants from water and are an alternative to the traditional synthetic polymer filter so instead of using the polymer filter which is going to create a lot of waste we can switch to these particular cellulose based water filters so that we can avoid the wastage or minimize and the high mechanical strength and the hydrophilic pro properties the two properties makes cellulose very interesting candidate for water filter what is that the mechanical strength for the durability and hydrophilic properties so that all the water molecules come into contact so that any heavy metals present in the molecule water can be filtered if it's effectively the cellulose filters can effectively remove particles pathogens and other contaminants from the water making it safer and more portable cellulose based water filters are widely used in both developed and developing countries for household industrial and agriculture applications so household obviously is a normal purifier whereas industrial the effluent what they give so they can filter it so that they can separate the waste and also for agricultural applications so that they can use it for the bore wells and all and they are you also used in environmentally friendly okay they are environmentally friendly obviously since it is a natural uh, microbe i mean uh, natural uh, molecule so it's obviously environmentally friendly and alternative to traditional filter as they are biodegradable and can be produced from renewable resources the properties of cellulose based water filter so since for water filter what is the main important thing it is the porosity so porosity is high here so high porosity biodegradability why do we need biodegradability in the introduction class i had explained so biodegradability is very necessary so that it cannot be it will become it will not become as a waste like a polymer waste some most of the polymers are not biodegradable that means the microbes cannot heat them up so that will become as a hard waste hazardous waste or any you know toxic waste kind of stuff so if it any material is biodegradable that means that can be degraded by the microbes then cost effective definitely as a natural resource and renewable resource and good mechanical strength and chemical resistance since there is no much chemical reactions which is happening in this particular structure so it is chemically resistant and then large surface area any molecule if you go to the molecular to the micro or to the nano scale as you go on decreasing the scale of the structure what happens their surface area will keep on increasing and why do we need surface area because the more the surface area the more the reactivity so here for filtration it will be better filtration so the effective or efficient filtration can be achieved the next importance of cellulose based water filters what are the importance the first thing is safe and clean water we get sustainability which is very important concern as of now in the world, in, uh, in, in the era of global warming and affordability versatility not only for water purification or not only for household application you can use it for industrial application agriculture applications and so on and alternative to the synthetic filters so synthetic filters create waste we can minimize the waste advantages so environmentally friendly definitely cost effective high porosity versatile good mechanical strength chemical resistance and large surface area what was the importance was there the points they will simply be the advantages for the cellulose based water filter so limitations there are obviously everything will have some limitations here also we have got some limit limitations the first thing is low resistant to high temperature 
at higher temperature it is low resistant that means sometimes it may degrade because of the high temperature so that is why this is one of the limitation the second thing low filtration efficiency for certain contamination so certain contamination it may not be able to filter properly so the third thing that is limited lifespan you cannot use it for you know for more than years and all right so then a uh, difficult to sterilize so the sterilization is difficult here why because we are having uh, the natural sources so if you if you want to sterilize we need, we need to heat it right so if we heat it what happens the the this particular structure cellulose might get degrade then difficult to sterilize so may clog easily because the clogging is very a uh, common thing in this particular uh, cellulose based filter because it is not properly or uh, you know designed as we design for a normal filter so what happens this the waste keep on it's, it's the heavy metals are more in the water so the clogging can be more that they, they can block the pores then they may affect the water taste so that was about the importance advantage and applications of the cellulose and the adsorption so let's see see about the how we can construct the cellulose based water filters there is uh, i will just give you the general approach the first thing what you have to do is you have to select the cellulose material first right so how it uh, it depends on the desired properties what you want from this particular material the cellulose material high need strength porosity and chemical resistance these are the three major properties i will look for and then that based on this if it is good at strength porosity and chemical resistance i will select only that particular cellulose material a common cellulose material include a paper cotton and wood fibers for example and then the second step is cellulose preparation you need to prepare this particular cellulose so now it's a very rough cellulose no now we have selected now you need to prepare it how you prepare it you cut it into a small pieces wash it to remove the impurity and dry it for the use now after cutting what now you need to prepare the layer you need to form the layer the third step is layer formation so what you will do either you you, you sh idea is to prepare the layer you follow whatever the method is so most of the commonly used method is stacking it or compacting it using the heat and pressure and then once you have a layer the fourth step is filter medium attachment you need to attach the filter medium now the cellular layer is attached with a particular filter medium for example what is filter medium it can be the mesh or a supportive structure to provide stability to this particular layer now you have prepared a layer right you need to have particular support for that so that will act as a uh, filter medium and it also increases the filter surface area the fifth step is chemical treatment now you need to treat this particular layer with chemically why we need to chemi chemically uh, treat this because we can increase the hydrophilicity so that more water can come into contact and also we can add some antimicrobial agent so that if any microbes are present in the water that can be degraded or that can be killed by these particular antimicrobial agents the, the sixth step is the housing assembly housing assembly what do you mean by housing assembly the filter medium is assembled into a housing that provides it means that it is attached to the water source and to collect the filtered water so it's like normal piping what we give the different piping next the la uh, last step is filter testing now the completed filter is tested to ensure that it meets the desired specification what are the desired specifications such as filtration efficiency and flow rate so here the flow rate and filtration efficiency plays a very important role and these are the things we are going to check whether to check whether the filtration is proper or not so that's it about the preparation next cellulose materials which are used in household water filter some of the examples so the most widely used or commonly used household water filter is cellulose acetate this cellulose acetate is a synthetic form of cellulose that has a properties which is good in good chemical resistance that's what we require high porosity again it's a requirement for the for the for an ideal filter and then high flow rate definitely more the high flow rate more the efficiency making it suitable for the use in household water filters additionally cellulose acetate is also a low cost material that is one more, one of uh, one of the attractive property and making it accessible for the use in household application this is exactly how it looks 
the other cellulose such as paper, cotton and wood uh, you know, fibers. They may also be used, but cellular acetate is most commonly used due to the favorable properties for the water filtration. So that was about the cellulose as a water purifier or filter. Under that, under uh, carbohydrates, we studied about the cellulose now. Now we are going to study about PHA and PLA as bioplastic. So PHA, polyhydroxy alkanoate. So this is nothing but a class of biodegradable and as well as biocompatible polyesters produced by the microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi. So this PHA is produced by what? Microbes. What are these microbes? Bacteria and fungi. So what are they known for? Basically two properties, biodegradability, biocompatibility. Now what is the difference biodegradability? Just now I told you. Biocompatibility in the sense it should be compatible to the adjacent molecules or the cells if it wherever it has been used. Okay. So they are a type of bioplastics. They are made up of a renewable resources such as sugars or corn starch and are considered to be the environmentally friendly alternative to the traditional petroleum based plastics so that we can avoid the uh, polymer wastage. General representation and examples is given here. This is how it looks structurally and these are the some of the based on the groups. We have got PHA, PHP, PHHX, PHO, PHD and, and PHPB. So these are all comes under the uh, PHAs. Next properties, biodegradability we discussed, biocompatibility we discussed. So here it can be because of the biodegradability it can be used, it can break down into the water and carbon dioxide reducing the impact on the environment. By compatibility here because of this particular property it can be used in medical devices such as sutures and implants without causing adverse reactions in the body because it is compatible to the living cell. Next mechanical properties, so definitely see it, uh, since it is again a polymer, so it has got the same similar mechanical properties to the traditional petroleum based plastics so that we can avoid those plastics in order to have the similar mechanical properties making them suitable for various applications. The next property is processing. So PHS can be processed using conventional plastic processing techniques only. You don't need to install the new devices or a new setup to process this particular this thing. You can simply use the conventional plastic processing techniques such as injection molding, blow molding, extrusion. These are the techniques can be used for the processing. Next engineering applications. The first thing comes is as a polymer when you use the plastic, when you talk about plastic, it's all about the packaging, right? So PHA is used in various forms of the packaging such as food container, beverage cups and as well as clamshell container. Medical devices also it has got the applications where so it can be used for the sutures, implants and drug delivery systems. Textiles also it, it finds applications. So it will be used in the production of biodegradable textiles and as well as uh, biodegradable composites for the use of construction and as well as furniture. In agriculture mulch films also it can be used for the production of biodegradable mulch films for agriculture to reduce the soil erosion and as well as the conserve moisture. And next consumer goods it can be used for the, such as you know consumer goods like for example toys, phone cases, water bottles, the normal plastics whatever we are using right now that can be replaced simply you can say like that so that the wastage will be minimum and it since it is a biodegradable no toxic effects on the environment. Automotive parts again we need most of the are 90 percent of the automotive parts are made up of polymer that can be replaced by here so majorly air ducts and the headlamp covers we can use this particular PHA bioplastics. Electronic devices can be used for the biodegradable component productions in electronic devices such as smartphones and laptops. Aerospace, again you can use it for the uh, you know, insulation and cable management application. Sporting goods, you can use it for the golf tees and as well as the uh, fishing lures and construction, the production of the biodegradable insulation and as well as soundproofing materials can be used. So that was about PHA as bioplastic. So under this only we are having one more topic that is a PLA as bioplastic. That was a PHA, here it is PLA. Here PLA stands for polylactic acid. So this is also biodegradable and bio-based plastic based from the, based from the corn starch, sugar cane and other natural resources. PHA was from the microbes, here it is basically plant derived. 
so it is mo mainly used in the sustainable alternative to the again traditional petroleum based plastics so in various applications for example packaging disposal tableware and as well as 3d printing again this pla has got a biodegradable property which is very useful for industrial composite facility uh, composing sorry composting facilities so it may not break down in the environment as quickly as advised but it may still have a negative impact on wildlife and as well as ecosystem if not properly disposed of so properties again same properties biodegradability we discussed it can be used for the waste in landfills and composting facilities renewability again since it is not dependent on the petroleum resources so it depends on the renewable resources it will be a renewable i mean that's how it will be very useful and then clean transfer uh, transfer transparent definitely since it is a natural one clear and transparent appearance making it suitable for packaging applications and heat resistant so pla has a relatively a low melting to a temperature so that it is not recommended for high heat application but it may it can maintain the shape and stability up to 60 degrees celsius usually for uh, uh, packaging applications and uh, automotive applications and all this temperature is enough okay biocompatibility pla is a non toxic and biocompatible bio compatible i already discussed about biocompatibility the same thing here so it can be used for food packaging and as well as medical devices and thickness and strength so definitely since it is a polymer also it is having good stiffness and strength but not as strong as the traditional petroleum based plastics and next printability so pla is a commonly uh, 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 you can use a normal common 3d printing due to its good printability and ease of use so let's see the engineering applications of this particular bioplastics that is pla bioplastics automotive parts as we discussed again for the air ducts and the headlamps covers you can use electronic devices as we discussed for pha it is again the copy paste because both are bioplastics aerospace applications it has got a separate applications in specifically aerospace application production of biodegradable parts in aerospace applications such as insulation and cable management now again sporting goods golf tees and the fishing lures construction again copy paste insulation and soundproofing material agricultural equipment same thing for as seed trays and the greenhouse applications this is one example which which one application which has been extended here which is not there in the pha then medical equipment it can be used for the biodegradable components in medical equipment such as diagnostic equipment and as well as hospital beds now most of the hospital beds and equipment these devices are either covered or their composition is 90% or 70% is of polymer those all things can be replaced so the very next topic is nucleic acids 